Verdict is in. Bad passwords are bad. That and more groundbreaking revelations coming up next. Secure Ninja. I'm at RSA 2016 right outside of the Moscone Center in the Yerba Buena Gardens Correct. with Todd Beardsley. Todd is the senior bearer of bad news for Rapid7. How are you, Todd? I am great. Are you great? Because to be the bearer of bad news, I would imagine that you would be kind of in a bad mood. It's it's a burden. Um, so the 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 position of bearer of bad news. Huh. Uh, I'm actually the security research manager, which means a couple things. One, I uh, handle outgoing vulnerability notifications to other companies, thus the bad news. Right. Um, it's it's a little bit difficult, you know, because a lot of companies that we've been dealing with lately are IoT focused, um, so they don't really have a lot of security maturity when it comes to getting this bad news. <laughs> so I try to convince them. It's like, no, no, no. You're. It's not that I'm telling you your baby is ugly. Your baby is wonderful. Your baby just <laughs> tripped and smashed its nose, and I'm helping you I with your baby. You about it. So that's that's the bear of bad news part. We've also done. Um, We've released some recent research on bad passwords. Um, so what that's about is uh, we audit the passwords that attackers believe work. Okay. And we do this by uh, setting up a network of honeypots. We've been running it for about a year. Uh, and we collect the passwords that attackers think are actually going to work because they can't do online brute forcing. Right. Um, they have to go by dictionaries. And so they do have to be a little selective on the passwords they try. Um, and so you've seen like all the top 100, top 10 bad passwords. They're all password, right. password one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. These passwords that the attackers are using are stupendously bad. Uh, and I think it's because of the protocol that we focused on, which is RDP. It's the Remote Desktop Protocol. And so this is uh, standard with Windows. And it turns out it's a pretty standard way of administering points of sale systems, POSs. So when you have POSs that are accidentally on the internet, set up by a vendor who's not really connected with your normal IT, mm -hmm. they probably say, OK, here's your POS. It's online, it works, the password is X, you might want to change that, I'm out of here. What? And maybe they don't hear that last part because the attackers seem to believe uh, that they get a lot of success with like a username of an administrator, a password of X, like the single character X. One X. Yeah. Uh, number two, that's the most common password we see. <laughs> number two is capital Z, little z. Uh, number three is start one, two, three, a little better. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but we have some weird ones in there, like six dots, like dot, 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 dot. Right. as a password. So they, the, so these passwords are stupendously bad, which was very shocking to me. Right. They're like even worse than what you think are the worst passwords, like password. Yeah. And I think, I think it's a couple of reasons. One, they're points of sale systems. So, right. you know, kissing cousins to IoT. Um, they don't feel like passwords in a security sense. They feel like, ah, oh, this is a thing I have to do. So they're getting set out of convenience rather than security. Right. Um, we see passwords too, like our like the vendor name of that POS is the username and password. You know, okay. so things like that, things that really should be changed. So, and we see this come up over and over again in IoT, where we have a I have a big problem with. All these insecure defaults. So, like, if you buy a, a like a home router today, for example, um, they've actually done a lot of good work on having randomly generated SSIDs. Like, the network name mm -hmm. by default is something weird and random, and you, and you can't guess it. Except the administrator panel is still admin admin. So, if you can do that with the SSID, how about you know applying that kind of technique to the password? And this is something that we're starting to champion a lot now, like where secure by default should really be a thing, especially when it comes to IoT, because they don't look like computers. Right. And the people using them sh shouldn't be treated like a security engineer or right. a network engineer. It's like these are pe like, like regular civilians, right? right. So. so rather than, because I would think that the, the issue would lie in like the, the people who purchase the system, mm -hmm. they should be really trained to change the password, but you think that the, it should I be secure I think that's a losing battle. Yeah. Because like, the expectation is, I buy my, 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 my gadget, mm -hmm. I plug it in, and it works. Mm -hmm. like, that's, that's the expectation. And that, that is fine. Like, I, I think it's kind of, I, I think it's a lie to say that like, usability and security are like, at loggerheads. Um, 
you can design things that are both usable and secure. It's just, it's hard. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's hard, right. but it's something we have to do. We have to do it now because we're looking at a lot of IoT coming online, like a ton of it, like 20 billion devices yeah. in the next what four years by 2020. Right. So, and they're all going to have crappy passwords. Oh, <laughs> so this is a, it's a coming disaster that we can get ahead of mm -hmm. um, with like, with sensible user design, user, you know, user experience, user uh, interface design, um, right. and sensible onboard ways of generating like random, okay passwords that aren't X. Right. <laughs> so. Right. At least a little bit better than that. A little. Yeah, IoT is a big, big, big topic, and it, it, be, it was like really a beginner topic a few years back, and now mm -hmm. it's like being more talked about, but apparently because there are more things coming online in the whole IoT world, it's getting more and more dangerous. Well, it, it's ratcheting up, it's hockey stick, right? Yeah. So yeah, you have like this, this graph of like IoT, 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 you have one or two things coming up, now you have 10 or 20, and now you have like a whole section of CES right, just exactly. happened, right? That is all IoT. And, and, and it's not like the people in the boardrooms of the of the companies making these devices are evil. You know, they're not they're not rubbing their knuckles and saying like, right. oh, mm -hmm. if we we'll save fifty cents a unit if we don't do security. It's like I, I don't think that's the case, right? They don't know um, because they're not they don't have um, the background. They haven't taken all the lumps that that traditional software manufacturers have already done. Right. And so you look at a company like Microsoft that has handled vulnerabilities and handled them well the last 10 years, well, like, they didn't start off that way. They used to kind of not be great at it. Right. Um, you know, and every software company goes through that, you know, maturity cycle. Um, and the IoT space is just now entering this, this realm of, of being technology providers and technology companies. They may not think that way right. because the thing they're making does not have a keyboard and mouse. Like they don't, or it's not like something you download. It's an mm -hmm. object, it's a teddy bear, it's a refrigerator, it's a car, you know? It's so these are things that are not computers that come with all the problems that computers have. Right, exactly. I think a lot of people will think like, oh, IoT, yeah, my refrigerator can get hacked, and then what's the hacker going to turn off my refrigerator? But there are greater risks. So tell us about some of those things that can actually occur. So attackers are not going to hack your refrigerator to like make your meat go bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not a very useful attack. I mean, maybe for hijinks, I guess you could do yeah. that. Um, but the, the value of these things is that they're all actually computers too. Mm -hmm. They run Linux, they run Android, they run, you know, m maybe some onboard thing that's special, um, but they all have computing power. And if I, like if I attack your refrigerator, you know, who cares? But if I have a good exploit against 100,000 refrigerators, well now I have a 100,000 node network right. that can do things like proxy my attacks into everyone's house or proxy my attacks elsewhere, or I can mine pure coin, or I can send spam, or I have a lot of things to do with all these computers. Because I don't care about the refrigerator part. I care about the computer part. As a bad guy, I care about the computer part. Yeah, I think that's, some, that's something people need to be made aware of because they think it's just like the silly little, oh, you can hack It is silly and it's a little stunt hacky um, to, to actually do it, but I think the, the core principle here is that we have these devices, they're coming on the internet, it's great that they talk on the internet. Like, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, it's super rad. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that makes them useful. It's the eye, right, in the IoT. The thing part is not all that useful. It's right. the eye part that's super useful. Right. Um, but that comes with uh, some responsibility, right? Like, there needs to be some, we have to, we, ha we as an industry, especially as a security industry, and more generally as like software and technology industries, have to come to grips with this notion that on the, the rules are different on the internet. Right. right. I mean, we all drive down the street, uh, and the only reason why we don't die every day is because of these lines of paint that we all trust. <laughs> right. Lines of paint are magic. Anyone can swerve over and get you, but people don't because we have like a social contract. Right. So, I don't know if you've been on the internet. The social contract there is pretty weak. Yeah. And so that's the that's the problem we're up against. This like we we have like a psychological problem. We have a manufacturing problem. We have a configuration problem. Right. And and I don't don't want to be the bearer of bad news here. I am fairly optimistic, right. um, but I think we can get ahead of it with, you know, talking to developers, talking to the manufacturers, talking to the vendors as reasonable security people. Right. So. Do you think there would be some kind of just like breaking point? Everyone's been, you know, talking <laughs> about making IoT more secure, but do you, what do you see, foresee happening in the future to kind of just 
be the breaking point? Uh, the easy solution is a disaster. Um, I don't think we need to get to that point. In fact, over the last year as, as a vulnerability handler, I've had a lot more success with vendors who don't respond with silence and don't respond with right. litigious email or litigious like certified paper mail sent to you know rap seven attorneys um i i have been getting a lot more positive feedback from vendors who have who i've never talked to before which is mm -hmm. weird it's bizarre and so i think they're getting the message now i think i think that we have room we have runway to deal with this problem and we probably don't need a disaster to make it happen you know right. That's good. So. Now, one more question. If you were a product vendor and you were designing a product that, mm -hmm. that you know, was connected to the internet, what, what security measures would you put into it to the make basics? it just super ultra secure? Uh, super ultra secure. All right. Well, all right. Free business plan for everyone out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing I would do is have onboard um, generated passwords. And so I don't have, well, there are two things. A, I can configure it without connecting to the internet first. Mm -hmm. That there's a chicken and egg problem there. Right, right, right. <laughs> so ideally, you do all your configuration, then the thing works. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of the plug it in and it works kind of model. Right. I know people like it, and people do user studies and say that that has to happen. I think you can get people to a point where it's like, well, you know, if you do that, anyone else can use it too. It's right. not just you can just use it, anyone can use it. <laughs> so first, it should be configurable without talking to the internet first. Uh, and secondly, you can, um, you can have these 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 algorithmically generated passwords uh, that are tied to a serial number or MAC address or something that's printed on the sticker. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it again. Your factory reset will set it back to that. That would do worlds of good. That that gets you like 80% of the way there. Yeah. Because the fact is is that most breaches today, and this is cited in any report you care to look at, are credential based and not exploit based. Right. So it is guessed and stolen and default usernames and passwords. So if you can lick that problem, you're home free. Like now you're down to the 20%. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I would do. Well, good. That's that's good. That's good, good advice. So thanks for thanks for talking with us and sharing your thoughts on IoT and everything you've got going on here at RSA. You're delivering a talk on the Honeypot study? Uh, yeah, I'm doing it at the booth here at RSA uh, a couple times a day. We're talking about all the honeypot stuff we've been doing. Um, I'm also leading a panel on makers versus breakers uh, tomorrow, just one day. Cool. Um, and we have software engineer versus hacker, basically. And it's not a fight. It's a, <laughs> you know, why are these cultures so different and how do we come together so to deal with the things I've been talking about? Right. With, like, you guys need to build in security. And developers say, like, yeah, but we like shipping code. <laughs> So right. like there's that problem, right? Yeah. And so we're going to address it and probably solve it tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, that's so. excellent. Yep. All right. Well, great. Thanks for your hard work My in pleasure. the hacking world. And thanks for talking with us as usual. Every time. I Every love time. it. Every, well, let's do DEF CON. <laughs> OK. OK. All done. right. <laughs> DEF CON done. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe right here on YouTube to Secure Ninja TV. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Secure Ninja. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching.